Hello everyone, this is Ben Hollifield coming to give you a quick overview of the latest version of the Here Now for ServiceNow update set and mobile app. Uh, we just now released version 2. Uh, there are a lot of enhancements here, a lot of new things to show you. Um, in addition to uh, better scripting, a little bit extra security, it's also easier than ever to set up. Um, for that reason, I want to skip over a lot of the setup processes here um, because it really is quite simple. Now, all you got to do is come to the Here Now for ServiceNow webpage, and it is here at amonnetworks.com. Simply download the update set. We're going with version 2 right here. Once that's downloaded, you unzip the update set, you add it to your instance, to your retrieved update sets, um, commit that update, and then you're good to go. Um, that should be easy for anyone currently familiar with ServiceNow. So once you have that installed, all you got to do is come to Properties here, and this will walk you through the set setup of um, adding your users, setting your Now code, everything you need to do to get going, including a link to the iOS app. Um, we also show up here, there are two different ways to get data into here now for geolocation. Um, one way is via this web check-in module over here on the left now. The other option is to use the iOS app, which you can see right here. That is currently available on the Apple App Store. We do have a new version of that coming out soon as well with a little bit better security and some new um, iOS 7 UI elements. So let's go straight into it. My instance here, we already have quite a bit of data here. And the first things you're going to notice if you're a current user of here now is that in the geolocation data table, we have some new information. Before, we just had the user, the latitude, and longitude. Now you'll see that we've added a location field. What we've done is we've enabled geofencing inside the geolocation app. And what this does is instead of just giving you lat and long, it's going to try to take the lat and long and correlate that to a location in your locations table if you have latitude and longitude location information on those records that is required. Um, so what this does is gives you a more friendly name um, for the location, gives you more usable data. In addition, you're going to see we also have a duration field over here now. And what this is doing is it's calculating the time between location updates from a user. So you start to get an idea of how long a user is spending at any given location. So this is very powerful and it gives you a cleaner data, more usable data, and a quicker way to, to see things like where people are spending their time, to correlate tasks um, to locations. And we'll show you some of, the, some of the stuff we can do with this now. Um, one thing is we had before with the today's locations map, we still have that, but we've also added some mapping enhancements that now auto center and auto zoom the map to show you just the data points that you care about. Um, before it was just going straight to a larger US map. Now we actually zoom it into what you care about. So here, for instance, is our today's locations map. These are all the location updates today. And these are all me just kind of roaming around Durham, um, North Carolina, where I am. And you can see when you click on one, it's going to give you my name. It's going to tell you the location, if it was able to geofence me, and how long I was there. Um, this particular set of data is for a run around town I did today. So you can see where I'm running by these particular locations. And it's geofencing me to those and saying how long I was there. One minute, one minute, 30 seconds. Um, so that's today's locations map. In addition, we've added another user's current locations map. And all this does is it shows you just the, the last check-in from each user. In this case today, I'm the only person using this, so you'll just see that it's just me there. Um, if you had 100, 200 different users, it's going to show you their current locations. So you can quickly see where all of your people are. In addition to that, let's go look at the properties real fast here. To support this new geofencing location and these duration calculations, we added a few options so you can choose how much of that you want to use. Um, here we have an option to enable geofencing and to tell you just what that is. We also have a radius threshold. How close do the, does the user need to be to this latitude and longitude um, to be considered at that location? I'm using a 500 foot threshold. You could tighten that up a bit if you have locations that are closer together. You can make it much larger if you have locations that are further apart. We also have options here to suppress, suppress repeated geofenced geolocation updates. Uh, what this does is instead of giving you multiple location update records from the same location, if a user, for instance, checks into a location five times or their phone does, um, you don't necessarily want five records. In this case, we suppress those subsequent records, and instead of adding a new location record every check-in, we just continue to increment the duration the user was at that location. So it gives you much cleaner data. And we can do that either for only geofence locations, or we can do it for any location. Um, if a lat long is not matched to a location in your location table, we can also suppress those location updates and just keep incrementing that duration. And in that case, we have a separate threshold because usually that might be a little bit tighter than, than for your actual geofence locations. 
Let me show you a little bit more we can do here from the geolocation data table. We've also added the ability to map on demand. Um, we had some, some issues before where we only had a couple of different map views we could use, um, not that useful. Now I have the option if I want to map, for instance, a certain set of records. Let's say I just want to map this chunk right here. I can check those records, scroll down and select from the drop down, map selected records. Oh, it's a little bit cut off there, unfortunately. But then it'll just map the selected records that I just chose. If I want to change those records, I can come down and uncheck these. I'll check a new set of records, choose map selected records, and it'll map just those records. So you can get an on-demand look of just what you care about seeing. In addition to that, perhaps I want to see where this particular user has been over the last period of time. I added a new option where now you can also right-click on whatever user you see and go down the show user timeline. And what this is going to do is going to generate a timeline view of that user's location over the last seven days. And then you can filter it down to a smaller period of time if you like. You can see at the bottom the larger span of the seven days sort of graphically laid out. Then we can scroll down and you can see all the different places that this user has been over the course of the last seven days. And if we've been able to geofence their location, we'll give you that as well. If you hold the cursor over, you'll see how long they were there, when this record was created, and the actual latitude and longitude that we're talking about. So pretty powerful stuff. Um, in addition, having this kind of data, knowing the locations and durations where people are, it enables us to do some cool stuff with reports. We can now go in here to our standard reports module, view run, and we have a geolocation data section here. So we can click on user geofence locations by time spent. This is showing us where users spend all their time. I have myself and my, my lovely wife here who we've been testing this with. And you can see that we spend most of our time at M506. That's where we live, so that makes sense. If we filter that out, we can start to get more interesting data. It's not M506. We can start to see where people are spending their time. They spend some time at DPAC there. Here's a purple thing for Dos Perros. Um, these are the places that I go throughout my day. Um, if you imagine this in the context of a field service team, we can start to do reporting around where particular users are spending a lot of their time um, or just which locations have the most time spent. For instance, which stores require the most field services effort, which have the most problems. Um, things like this become pretty valuable for showing you how to allocate resources to certain geographic locations, how to look, allocate time to certain locations. Um, pretty powerful information. In addition, we can go down and see our user top location updaters. Clearly, I have been a much more... Uh, much busier locator, locate, location update sender than my wife here. So that is pretty much it. Um, in addition to those new features, um, we do just have a little bit better code on the back end. Uh, we type things up. We've added some scripting in our script includes that uh, enable the end user, you, to um, add your own enhancements slightly easier. Um, so that's it. This is available right now on amonnetworks.com. And the new version of the iOS app will be released any day now. Um, if you're following us on Twitter, our hashtag is at here now for SN. And we will announce any new releases, um, any new updates through that Twitter feed. Thanks a lot.